There was a dark time in video games where developers believed that if you were a girl, then you wouldn't enjoy stuff like this. I don't know about all the females watching right now, but I appreciate a good violent gaming experience every now and then. Unfortunately, in the early 90s, if you were to pick up a game directed towards girls, what would you get? <sighs> yep, this is what every developer thought the female gender wanted at the time. A game full of girly stereotypes. Oh, let's make one of the bosses articles of clothes floating in the air for Barbie to defeat. Because, you know, girls like shopping and trying on clothes. And if it wasn't a game about that, it was a game about playing as a pony, running around doing tasks a kindergartner could figure out. And yes, before anyone points it out, My Little Pony, the franchise that I was spun off of, also had a few of these games in the past as well. Wow, that is super meta when you think about it. Now, the reason why I'm bringing all this up is because the video game that I'm going to talk about today is a product of this, uh, girls don't like violent video games era. Disney's Beauty and the Beast Bell's Quest on the Sega Genesis. Now, I'm sure I don't need to explain to you guys what Beauty and the Beast is. It's not only one of the best Disney movies of all time, but some would say it's one of the best movies of all time, period. And like a lot of movies around that time, it got made into a video game. But what was weird about this situation is that for Sega Genesis, two versions were made. A game where you play as Belle and a different game where you play as Beast. Y you see where this is going, don't you? That's right. They made a boy's version and a girl's version. Look, I feel that Disney movies are gender neutral. They appeal to everyone, but for whatever reason, some higher-up manager thought two versions needed to be made and the one you play is based on your gender. Look, before I take a look at the Bell game, let me give you a quick overview of the Beast game. It's basically what you think a classic platformer would look like. The beast has the ability to use his claws on the enemies and can growl to freeze them in their tracks, giving you a few extra seconds to defeat them. If you push down, he'll go into a crawling mode where he can now use his teeth to attack. That's pretty cool, actually. And look at this battle right here. Gaston stands no chance against my might. <laughs> so now let's go back to the other version. So upon looking at everything, the graphics are pretty nice, but that's about it. Belle isn't given a weapon to deal with enemies, so... All she can do is avoid them. Doesn't that sound like fun? <sighs> Watch this. Here comes a bird. I can jump over it. And what happens if the bird is up too high? I can duck underneath it. Ooh, cool. So pretty much all that goes on in this game is exploration, and that wouldn't be a bad thing if it was more like an action game where you were given something to fight with rather than avoid all the enemies. To be truthful, there are a lot of boring parts, especially in the first level. You walk around town, hearing the townspeople talk about there being a drought. You then find out there is a boulder blocking all the water. In a normal video game, you would find some way to move it or destroy the boulder, but instead you have to walk back to town and find Gaston and engage in a choose-your-own-conversation feature and ask him to move the boulder for you. Exciting, right? <laughs> Your main obstacle is to find someone else to take care of it for you. Oh, and then there's the woods. Let me tell you about this. So, there's a part where you have to navigate through this dense, tree-filled area, and the only way to tell where you're going are these different colored flowers on the ground. You learn from one of the townspeople that whenever you see a white rose, go east. A yellow rose means go north, and a red rose is for northwest. That's all well and good, but... He never tells you what the blue roses mean. You just have to guess on that one, and you'll never guess what happened to me when I went through this level. You know how sometimes games will glitch in random areas? Well, this game decided to do it here, and it was the worst possible glitch that could happen. 
the colors of the flowers change to different colors. See this red flower here? It's supposed to be white. Yeah, a lot of the roses change colors on me. But the level design didn't change now, so I have no idea where to go. I just have to reset and try again. Can you believe that? Once you get into the castle, it becomes a search and find game where you have to look inside various objects to find keys to open doors that'll lead you to more keys and more doors. It's kind of tedious, actually. From this point on, the only part of the game I like is riding through the woods because at least it felt like a game, but the rest just enrages me. Especially the ending. There's no final boss. No fight. No, nothing. You just dance around a ballroom with beasts trying to catch falling hearts. What was that the beast could do in the other game? He punches bats in the face, and yet they decided to not let Belle attack in any way. Even Aladdin was given a sword in his game. And yes, before anyone brings it up, I'm aware that he had a sword in the battle with Jafar, so it makes sense to let him have that throughout the game. However, here's my counter argument to that. If Aladdin can be given his sword because he had it in one scene of the movie, then Belle should be allowed to have the stick that she used to fight off the wolves. So why not? Why not give her a stick so she can defend herself against birds, bats, and boars? Well, that's a lot of bees. Was there just some marketing guy at Sunsaw that was like, Our charts say that girls do not like violence in video games, so we don't want Belle to have a weapon. Oh, we also learned from the focus groups that girls prefer to walk around finding obstacles for other people to deal with rather than handling it themselves. And one more thing, when she loses her life are, just make sure you animate her falling to her knees and crying. Because she's just a girl. Everyone, I'm telling it like it is. Belle's quest is kind of insulting, and it represents a time in video games that I'm glad we moved beyond. Today, it doesn't matter if you're a guy or a girl and want to play a game that focuses more on violence. How many female YouTubers can you think of that this 90s formula wouldn't apply to? I bet it's a lot. Modern developers just want to make a game that's good in general. Not just for guys, but for everyone. Can you imagine if this was still done today? Where two versions of something were released and the one you played depended on your gender? With gaming culture as it exists right now, that just sounds idiotic. But Bell's Quest does serve a time capsule to show just how far we've come in gaming. I'm Sunset Shimmer, and thanks for watching. Oh.